Ladies and gentlemen, this hearing is resumed. Nung lunes po, isiniwalat ko ang nakababahalang pastilias modus sa Bureau of Immigration kung saan bilyong-bilyong piso ang bumaha sa ating mga airports para mapadulas ang pagpasok ng mga Chinese nationals. As shocking as these revelations were, I was heartened by subsequent media reports on the quick action taken by our government agencies. An investigation team has been formed to investigate the allegations. Some government officers have been relieved from their posts. And lifestyle checks are going to be conducted on pinpointed immigration officials. Nagpapasalamat po ako para dito. Pero napakadami pa ang dapat gawin. At napakadami pa ang dapat Managot. We were actually ready to wait another week before resuming the hearing, but I was troubled by news that our informant's life was in danger. This was Monday afternoon, only hours after the hearing. Nagpa siya ang aming informant na lumantad sa harap ninyong lahat ngayon. Walang disguise, walang cover, para patotohanan ang ebidensya at magsabi ng katotohanan. Our witness today is willing and able to name names. Barya lang ang napupunta sa mga immigration officers at mid-level employees sa airport. Hindi rin lahat, hindi rin lahat ang tumatanggap. We need to go after the big fish because the money goes way beyond frontline employees. Mas malaki ang kinikita ng mga protector at supplier. Milyones buwan-buwan ang natatanggap nila mula sa mga Chinese. May mga padrino talaga itong mga daan-daang illegal na pogo operation na nagdadala ng krimen, trafficking, at prostitution sa bansa. Yun ang dapat nating tukuyin at panagutin sa batas. I know that this is only the tip of the iceberg. 10,000 ang binabayaran ng Chinese national sa Greece money Pero 2,000 lang ang pinaghahati-hatian sa airport bilang pastilyas. Asaan ang 8,000 at sino ang naambuna nito? Ang saklaw ng kaalaman ng ating informant ay na iya terminals lang. Paano ang ibang international airports, kagaya ng sa Clark, sa Cebu, sa Kalibo, sa Davao? But it has to start somewhere. And today, it starts with one young man ready to tell his story. I call. Okay. I call Alison Alex Chong. I understand he is represented by councils, and uh, he will be administered the oath by the Comsec once he is in the hall. And of course, uh, the Comsec will also administer the oath to our Bureau of Immigration Commissioner Morente. Now that uh, Mr. Chong's counsels are also in the hall, uh, he will now, together with Commissioner Morente, be administered the oath by the Comsec. Uh, the gentleman will please stand. To Commissioner Morente and our witness, uh, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, please state your name. Do solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth before this committee. Thank you. Thank for, you the rec for the record, Madam Chair, uh, they answered in the affirmative. Yes, thank you, Comsec. Thank you to the Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chong. Uh, Mr. Chong's counsels will now enter their appearance.
Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I am Attorney Sara Soriano Hermida, respectfully appearing as counsel for Mr. Addison Chong. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I am Attorney Tristan Toriano, respectfully appearing for Alex Chong. Thank you, counsels. So, witness, will you please state your full name for the record? I am Alison Chong. Are you currently employed? Yes, ma'am. Where are you employed? At the Bureau of Immigration. And what is your designation? I am an Immigration Officer 1 assigned at the NAIA Terminals. As Immigration Officer 1 assigned at the NAIA Terminal, what are your primary functions? I work as a frontline immigration officer at NAIA. I screen arriving and departing passengers. And pwede mo bang sabihin ngayon sa aming komite, bakit ka ba nandito ngayong ah, hapon? I am here to testify and expose the Pastillas scheme. Now I understand na meron kang dalang statement na gusto mong basahin. So please do so. I am employed at the Bureau of Immigration as Immigration Officer 1, a position I have held since the year 2012. My primary function as an immigration officer involves operating the immigration counter in Ninoy Aquino International Airport, wherein I am tasked to examine the travel documents of departing and arriving passengers rotating in its three terminals. As a frontline immigration officer, I have personally witnessed various illegal transactions over the years involving the extortion of money in exchange for unimpeded passage through the Philippines, whether leaving or entering our country. In 2016, the Department of Justice remo removed the so-called overtime pay of immigration officers. Consequently, this resulted in general unrest and disgruntlement among the immigration workforce. To cope with the, with the substantial deduction of their salaries, some immigration officers decided to offer VIP servi services for immigrants who are casino high rollers. This VIP service in involved immigration officers accepting 2,000 pesos for each high roller in exchange for the latter's convenient and seamless immigration. Sensing the immigration officer's lucrative operation, the Travel Control Enforcement Unit chiefs, namely Bien Guevara, Glenn Comia, and Den Binsol, who were then under former Ports Operation Division Chief Red Marinas, decided to take over the operation. They took control of the collections from entering and departing passengers, then disbursed commissions at the end of every week. The TCEU chiefs were relieved from their posts sometime in the middle of the year 2019. As for POD Chief Red Marinas, he was assigned as Associate Commissioner of the Bureau of Immigration. However, he later resigned to run as mayor of Muntinlupa. On the year 2017, I started to notice the dramatic increase of Chinese nationals entering the Philippines. In a day, approximately 2,000 Chinese nationals entered the airport terminal. Immigration officers received through a group chat in the Viber application a list of names of Chinese nationals who were to be allowed entry into the Philippines without going through the usual immigration process. These Chinese nationals were no longer required to undergo screening. They were sim simply let inside the Philippines without question or investigation. However, the first Viber group chat was deleted when the Bureau of Immigration Airport Operations came under scrutiny from the National Bureau of Investigation. To avoid detection, the names of the Chinese nationals who were to be allowed VIP treatment 
were no longer sent through Viber. To circumvent this, the flow of the operations changed. The immigration officers at the counter were asked to bring each Chinese national to the holding area of the TCEU. A member of the TCEU would then check if the name of the Chinese national was in a master list. If the Chinese national's name was on the list, then he or she would be allowed entry into the Philippines without further screening or profiling. Naturally, this new operation caused the immigration officers great inconvenience since they had to stand up, leave their seats, then lead each and every arriving Chinese national to the TCEU holding area every day. Because of this, a new Viber group chat was created, which revived the original flow of the operations. News of the operation spread fast. This time, other syndicated groups within the Bureau of Immigration started submitting their own list of names of Chinese nationals. These groups worked with tribal agencies in China, the latter being the origin of the names of the entering foreign nationals. The syndicated groups would often compete with each other to gain favor from the Chinese travel agencies. These syndicated groups were headed by different personalities within the Bureau of Immigration. Some of these personalities are Totoy Magbuhos, Deon Albao, alias Nancy, Paul Borja, alias Lisa, Anthony Lopez, alias AL, and Dennis Robles, alias DR. They occupy various plantilla positions within the Bureau. They still maintain their syndicate group's operations. I noticed that Chinese nationals who fit the profile of an employee for a Pogo company enter our country with a tourist visa applied for with the Philippine consulates. The influence of these Chinese organizations and personalities became more apparent when they started providing immigration officers lunch meals wrapped in Chinese newspapers. However, this recently stopped due to the travel ban on incoming Chinese nationals due to the novel coronavirus. Each cooperating immigration officer would receive around 20,000 pesos weekly for Terminal 1 and 8,000 weekly for Terminal 3 duties. When I saw on television the live broadcast of the Senate hearing chaired by Senator Risa Ontiveros regarding the rights of Pogo-related prostitution and her discussion of the possible involvement of the Bureau of Immigration. I was compelled to come forward and share what I know based on my personal knowledge as a frontline immigration officer. Is that the end of your statement? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chong. Uh, thank you, Alex. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Amy Marcos. Thank you for joining our hearing this afternoon. Um, Mr. Chong, uh, Alex, sino po yung mga admin ng mga Viber chat na binanggit mo sa iyong statement? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the Viber chat admins, marami po ito. But uh, yung marerecall ko po, ko po ngayon, I will state them here. So Please do so. Uh, so from the past and the present, yung narerecall ko ngayon, here are the Viber chat admins. Ralph Garcia, Paul Villanueva, Ernest Gabe Estacio, Danilo Diodor, Fahad Kalaka. And yung pinapakita namin ngayon na Viber screenshots. Authentic po ba ito? Yes, ma'am. Since they are authentic, 
ma-identify mo po ba yung mga miyembro na mga Viber uh, chat groups na ito? Yes, ma'am. Uh, given enough time, I can identify them all. I can put them down on, on a list, pero sobrang dami po nito. Too many to mention here right now. Too many to mention, pero as you said, given the time, maililista mo in writing. Yes, ma'am. To the best of my knowledge. To the best of your knowledge. At uh, anong ibig mong sabihin nung sinabi mo na Chinese nationals are allowed in the Philippines nang walang screening, questioning, or investigation? Bakit? Ano ba ang normal procedure dapat uh, sa mga entering foreign nationals? Pwede mo bang i-walk through yung committing ito uh, sa procedure na ito? Yes, ma'am. Uh, para sa Chinese tourists, hahanapan natin yan first ng uh, return flight, return ticket going back to China. So, for example, if they are staying here for about a week, hahanapan natin ng return ticket. Second, of course, yung hotel booking or place to stay. Then third, yung mahalaga, yung itinerary. Ano ba talaga ang gagawin nila dito? Yan ba ay maglalaro ng kasino, magda-diving ba yan, mamamasyal? So, dun pa lang, makikita natin ano yung intent, ano yung purpose, purpose of travel nila. And the fourth, in some cases, hinahanapan din natin yan ng uh, proof of financial capacity, like credit cards. And uh, yung pinakamabilis na way to screen a passenger is pag nakita natin siya ng proof of travels from other countries. So let's say nagka-travel ito sa Canada or kahit Singapore. So makikita natin na frequent traveler itong person na to. So more or less, legitimate tourist ito. But there are cases, and there have been a lot of cases, na... Pag bukas mo ng passport, makikita mo nag-work sa Cambodia itong, itong Chinese uh, passenger. So dun pa lang, malalaman mo na since yung mga Pogo galing sa Cambodia, tinanggal sila dun, alam mo na kaagad na mag-work yun dito sa Pogo. Dun pa lang. So red flags. So both, nakikita namin yung red flags and yung uh, proof, real proof na siya nga isang tourist. And curious nga, no, yung nabanggit mo na galing sa Cambodia is maaring isang red flag. Bakit marami ba sa mga dumarating na maraming Chinese nationals gamit ang tourist visa uh, in the past few years? Ay napapansin ninyo na red flag nyo na galing sa Cambodia? Yes, ma'am. Marami po talaga. As in, uh, ang estimate ko dyan, mga nasa one-third. One-third. Estimate ko. Malaki-laking uh, fraction nga yun. And pag sinabi mo kanina, noong sinabi mo na hindi na uh, tinatanong, hindi na iniimbestiga, uh, hindi na sinescreen, ibig sabihin, uh, hindi na hinahanapan itong mga return flight, hotel booking, itinerary, proof of financial capacity, at proof of travels uh, in, uh, other, from other countries? Yes, ma'am. Basta po nasa listahan yung pangalan, Wala nang ibang questions asked, tatak ka agad pasok. Ngayon, sa huling hearing uh, namin, no, bukod dito sa mga Viber screenshots, may pinakita din akong uh, video. Uh, gusto kong uh, ipakita muli ang video na ito at baka pwede mo kaming uh, tulungang mas maintindihan uh, ito. Follow me. So at any point, no, anong nakikita namin dito? Uh, anong pinapanood namin dito? You may interject. Ito po yung... Uh, Please have a seat first. Ito po yung uh, daily Ma operation ng Naiya Terminal 1 graveyard shift. So 8pm to 5am. So maraming Follow Chinese me. flights ito tumarating. Andito yung concentration ng Chinese flights. Flights from China. This place here? So, yan pong loob. Yan ang holding area ng TCEU. 
Wala talaga yun. Ito ang taong to, si TCEU member siya. Kahapon, naglagay ng sabi. Sabi ko huwag kasi... At nasa kanya yung listahan. Mas maganda rin i-refer nyo naman sa amin dito. Kami na maglalas. Eh, yun nga. Dahil nung time na yan, nakakalat yung mga... Tatlo kami dahil ng counter. NBI agents. Ay, okay na ito ba? We, we think it was NBI agents na nakakalap all throughout the naiya terminals kaya naghigpit. Bato mo rin lang ito. Alang-aling. Yes, boss. Thank you, ah. Yung tao mo yan yung na-identify sa previous hearing ni Mr. Medina. Follow me? You here. Sinabi nila na na-reassign na. Opo. Bale, tinanggal po siya sa TCEU. And then, binalik siya sa immigration counters, sa front line. Kasama to? Nasa terminal 3 po siya, graveyard. Ah, isa-isa. O sige, dalawa para mabilis. Nilipat sa aling terminal? Terminal 3. Terminal 3. Apo. And just to clarify, po, itong pinapakita natin sistema, ito yung system na wala na kasi dahil napagod ang mga immigration officers sa kakatayo, kaya balik-balik na. Yes, ma'am. At ang isa pang nilang naging takot dyan, minsan kasi, sobrang dami na nung Chinese passengers dun sa loob ng holding area. Hindi na magkasya, parang lumalabas na. And parang mas magiging uh, halata ng NBI na maraming ang pinapasok sa loob tapos lumalabas. So, mas may expose yung operation pag ganon. So, binalik nila yung dating Viber Group. Ang isa pa nilang takot noon is baka magreklamo rin daw yung... yung uh, may ganyan din eh, na ang gulo na magreklamo yung Chinese Embassy kasi... Ano, uh, bakit maraming masyadong Chinese nationals na nasa, naka-hold, nasa holding area? Punong-puno, as in, hindi na kasya doon. So may special treatment na sa holding area, maaaring ireklamo pa ng embassy nila? In, yung angle po, ma'am, na marami daw nire-refer na Chinese nationals. Chen Cheng Ho. At yung babaeng nakaupo dun sa tabi ng TCEU uh, officer, siya daw ay translator? Tama po yun, Your Honor. Ano siya? Uh, translator, interpreter ng mga ano, Chinese passengers. Ikaw ba ang kumuha ng video na ito? Yes, ma'am. Bakit mo kinuha yung video na ito? Kasi, ano ne, ang sukdulan na po eh. Gusto ko po i-expose talaga itong nangyayari sa immigration. May karapatan po kasing malaman ang malaman ng bawat Pilipino. At yung mga photos na kanina ipinakita, kailan mo kinuha yung mga photos na yan? Ah, ito pong photos na to. Kasama po yan dun sa, actually, nakapost po yan dun sa Viber group. May nagpipicture po yan. And then, uh, lahat naman po, nakita yan within the Viber group. At pati yung video, balik tayo sa video, kailan mo kinuha yung video na iyan? This is uh, July of 2019. May timestamp po yun. So, sigurado ka na 2019 ang kuhang ito? Na yes, ma'am. And we can, we can also check the attendance doon. Apo. And kanina, sabi mo nga, kaya mong i-identify itong tao, itong lalaki na nag-check ng list? Yes, ma'am. Nasa loob ba siya ng BI? Nasa, yes, ma'am. Currently assigned sa NAIA Terminal 3 Graveyard Shift. Ngayon, uh, Mr. Chong, Alex, no? Binanggit mo rin yung mga syndicate groups na sa loob ng BI na nagtatrabaho kasama ng mga travel agencies sa China at nagkocompete sila, sabi mo. Nagkocompete sila sa isa't isa para maging itong syndicate group sa BI, nagkocompete sa isa't isa para maging favored contacts ng mga Chinese travel agencies. May binanggit kang mga pangalan na kanina na identified or head sa mga uh, syndicate group sa loob ng BI. Isa-isahin nating uh, ulit, no? Kasi gusto kong itanong sa iyo, ano exactly ang involvement nila? Uh, binanggit mo una si Bien Guevara. Ano ba yung involvement niya? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Si Bien Guevara, siya yung uh, uh, during the time of uh, Red Marinas as, as the POD chief, siya yung TCEU head ng NAIA Terminal 2. Tapos under po niya lahat ng TCEU doon. 
yung binagit mong POD, yun yung kasalukuyang pinamumunuan ni Mr. Grifton Medina. So, yeah. sila yung nagpalit kay Mr. Red Marinas. Yes, Your Honor. Right. Binanggit mo rin si Glenn Comia. Ano naman yung eh, exactly involvement niya? Glenn Comia is the TCEU head of NAIA Terminal 3 at that time. Ano ulit yung first name ni Pinsol? Hindi ko na-catch. Uh, Den Pinsol. Den Pinsol. Ano yung naman yung exact involvement nila? Ah, so, sorry, Your Honor. I, I'll make a correction, no? Den Pinsol is the NAIA Terminal 3 TCEU head. And si Glenn Comia sa NAIA Terminal 1. And uh, last but not the least, dun sa unang grupo ng mga pangalang binanggit mo, again, for the record, si Red Marinas, ano exactly ang involvement niya? Okay. Uh, si Red Marinas, tao niya, si Glenn Comia, si Den Binsol, at saka si Bien Guevara. So, he installed them during his time as POD chief. So, Bukod sa designations nitong unang apat ng mga taong binanggit mo, starting with Red Marinas, tapos yung tatlong taong sinabi mo mga taon niya at siya ang nag-appoint or nag-install sa kanilang mga posisyon noon, ano yung mga involvement ng bawat isa nitong apat dun sa Pastillas operation na in mo dito sa aming komite? Yes, ma'am. Uh, specifically, uh, let's start with Glenn Comia. Since hawak niya yung NAIA Terminal 1, which has the highest concentration of lights from China. So, bale, sa kanya dumadaan lahat nung, ano dun eh, yung hawak niya yung isa sa mga pinama, pinakamalaking supplier ng Chinese. Chinese passengers, as, as shown po dito sa, sa sample ng accounts receivable ng NAIA Terminal 3. Ang code name nga niya is GC pa at that time. And then uh, after nung ma-expose nga sila, nag-evolve, naging orange, so nagkaroon na sila ng code names. So ang involvement po niya, isa siya sa pinakamalaking supplier ng Chinese passengers. So siya yung pinaka-conduit from the, from the, what do you call this, travel agencies from China. Kasi from China, Tapos may travel agency yan dito or kung sino mang liaison nila na tao, then through Glenn Comia. Ganon din kay Dan Binsol. And then si Bien Guevara, I do not know kung sino ang nagsusupply sa kanya o kung nagsusupply man siya. But more of like, since na iya terminal to, hawak niya lahat, tumatakbong operation doon, command responsibility. Opo. And si Red Marinas, ano ang direct involvement niya exactly dito sa Pastillas operations? Okay, bali ang magiging, uh, to the best of my knowledge, ang involvement ni Red Marinas is tao niya kasi, ito mga to. Siya ang nag-install dyan specifically sa kanilang tatlo and they report to him. Nasa BI pa ba ang mga taong ito? Kasi alam ko si Red Marinas wala na doon. May influence pa ba sila? Siya at yung tatlo pang tao, may influence pa ba? Meron po, Your Honor. Actually, the way I see it, no, ang Bureau of Immigration is a government agency. It belongs to the Filipino people. It is not, hindi nila ito personal na pagmamayari. Masyado po kasing deep yung roots sa Bureau of Immigration eh, na, na yung mga matatagal ng empleyado dyan, sila na talaga yung nagko-control ng ahensya. Tapos takot lahat sa kanila kasi syempre, ano yan eh, politika yan eh. Yung uh, paano na yung career ko, paano na yung ganito, mapag-iinitan ba ako, It itatapon ba ako sa Mindanao. So, uh, anyway, going back to the question po, Your Honor, si Red Marinas, has already resigned because he ran for mayor. Then si Den Binsol, Glenn Comia, Bien Guevara, he has been reassigned to another unit. And meron nga itong unit na kinreate, 
tawag dito ATG, Anti-Terrorism Group. Ito yung parang nagiging, uh, anong tawag natin dito, tambayan nila. Kasi, ano, saan ba sila ilalagay kung hindi naman magkikreate ng bagong group for them? So, palamig muna, tapos pagka nawala tong issue, Balik. Balik ulit. Ganyan, ganyan naman yan eh. Ganyan ang style dyan. So, ganyang kaimportante yung trabaho sa pangalan palang anti-terrorism group. Nagiging tambayan lang nung tatlong taong ito. Ah, Ma'am, uh, in my own opinion po, no? Ang anti-terrorism group, bagong grupo lang yan eh. Wala yan dati eh. Bakit tayo magkikreate ng ATG, ika nga, anti-terrorism group? Kung meron naman tayong... Uh, BI Intel, Interpol, na talagang gumagawa na ng mga trabahong yan. So, ginawa lang yan para, ika nga, tambayan. Kasi ito namang mga to, nasa BI lang naman to para magpayaman eh. Pasensya na po. Sa... Med medyo nadadala, nadadala lang ako, Your Honor. Kasi, yun, yun lang po talaga nararamdaman ko eh. Kami naman po mga nasa front lines eh, nagtatrabaho ng araw-araw tapos sila pagka wala nang kinikita na ganyan, eh, papahinga lang. Ngayon, yung isa pang grupo na binanggit mo, sina Totoy Magbuhos, Deon Albao, Elias Nancy, Paul yes, Borja, Elias Lisa, mga lalaki pero Elias babae, Anthony Lopez, eh, Elias AL, at Dennis Robles o DR. Sino-sino naman sila dito sa Pastillas Operation na ito? Yes, ma'am. Iisa-isahin ko po sila. Si... And ito po uh, mga... Mr. Chong, Alex, may I remind the witness to mm -hmm. stick to personal knowledge and refrain from uh, giving uh, too many opinions. Personal knowledge po tayo. So, dito po sa limang susunod na mga tao. Yes, Your Honor. Para po kay Dennis Robles, DR... Uh, alam ko po, recently nagkaroon ng uh, inalis po lahat ng terminal heads, pinalitan. Si Dennis Robles, siya yung uh, terminal head, terminal 2. Isa po siya sa pinakamalaking supplier din ng Chinese passengers. Dion Albao used to be uh, with the CCEU then under Glenn Comia. And then, uh, natanggal din siya sa TCEU, nasa ATG siya ngayon. Isa rin siya sa pinakamalaking supplier ng uh, Chinese passengers. The same po with Paul Borja. Magka, magkasama po sila na galing din sa TCEU. Anthony Lopez uh, used to be a TCEU head Terminal 3. Siya po yung pumalit kay Den Binsol for a while. Nung matanggal si Den Binsol. And then, uh, ngayon, uh, wala na rin siya dun sa position na yun. And then, supplier din po siya ng Chinese passengers. Uh, Isa pa? Uh, did I miss? GC. Ah, si Totoy Magbuhos naman. Totoy Magbuhos. Uh, marami rin po siya. Chinese passengers. Pero dati, dati ko po siyang uh, supervisor sa counter. Then, na uh, Pero matagal na yun. Then now, I don't know kung ano pong designation niya. Uh, Mr. Chong, can you pakitignan mo yung mga BI officials na nandito sa session hall sa ngayon? Yes, Your Honor. Sino sa personal knowledge mo, sino sa kanila ang may personal knowledge ka na tumatanggap din ng pastillas o may kinalaman dito? Wala po, Your Honor. Wala po rito. You're certain of that. You can only identify others who are not in this room. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you for that. Ngayon, sa huling hearing ko, nagtanong din ako sa mga opisyal ng BI na yung iba ay nandito muli ngayon. Uh, at pinipresyon ko yung mga officials ng BI ay mga boss mo, tinanong ko silang lahat, apat sila nung nakaraang hearing, kung alam nila kung ano ang pastillas. Sabi nila, local delicacy, sweets na gawa sa Bulacan. Ikaw, Alex, tanungin kita, 
bilang immigration officer one ng TI, ano ang pastillas? Your Honor, pastillas is ano, uh, Chinese money that is used to bribe immigration officers so they can freely enter our country. So, hindi talaga local delicacy lang nagawa sa Bulacan at Matamis. Napakapait nito, no? Hindi po, Your Honor. Suhol po talaga. And is it a common term sa, sa mga naia terminals natin? Is it a common term uh, uh, para dito sa Chinese money used to bribe BI officers? Yes, Your Honor. Kasi nung bandang una, binabalot pa yan sa band paper. Tapos nagkatawanan yung mga tao pag binibigay mukha daw pastillas. Tapos po noon, nag-evolve na siya sa naging ano na, yung uh, brown envelopes, pay, pay, pay out envelopes. And then recently, naging ano na, nasa goma na lang. Minsan, nakagoma na lang. Ang tawag pa nga dyan, pag sulduhan na, pastillas time. Ang tawag dyan, pastillas time. Okay. It sounds worse and worse, no? Habang nalalaman natin yung mga detalye. Yes, Your Honor. Pinakita ko rin yung uh, breakdown, hatian ng pastillas na ito nung nakaraang hearing, pag pastillas time na ika nga. Kinoconfirm mo ba ang breakdown na ito? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, as of that date, no? And then, uh, since uh, natatakot nga sila na ma-expose ito, malamang may mga changes na dyan or may mga internal arrangement Pero I confirm that authentic po yan. At mukhang meron talagang uh, formula na ginagamit para i-compute uh, magkano sa absolute uh, uh, value ng Philippine peso ang bawat percentage na naka-assign dito sa uh, anim na, na personnel or official na ito. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Ano po yan? Uh, Pinag-meetingan po nila yan. So... Uh, Siyempre, nagkaroon sila ng negotiations. They agreed to that. So, uh, bilang uh, pagsasara sa panimulang pagtatanong ng komite sa iyo, Mr. Chong, Alex, ano ba yung uh, nagtulak sa iyo para mag-come forward at sabihin sa aming komite ang itong mga nalalaman mo? Uh, Your Honor, para sa akin po, dalawang bagay ang pinakamalaking factor. Una sa lahat, I feel na yun pong mga kasamahan kong immigration officers, they have been enslaved by this corrupt system. And whether or not they were aware of it, biktima din sila. And I wanted to free them from this system. That is why I am making this sacrifice. Pangalawa, May karapatan pong malaman ng bawat Pilipino kung ano pong nangyayari sa ahensya ng gobyerno na ito, especially borders po natin yung kailangan bantayan. Feeling ko po, invasion po ito. Feeling ko po. So, I made this sacrifice. Well, actually, ginamit ko rin yung ganong description na hindi lamang investments, parang nagiging invasion at sa huli, well, nung mga krimen laban sa babae at bata na iniimbestiga ng uh, komite ko. Pero uh, kumusta ka na pala ngayon mula nung nagsimula itong uh, pagtinig namin? Yung mga colleagues mo ba, yung mga boss mo ba, nag-reach out sa iyo para mag-get in touch sa iyo? Um, may mga tumatawag po sa akin mga number, hindi ko naman po sinasagot, tapos may ma na hindi ko po alam, and then may mga disappearing chats pa sa Viber na hindi ko po nababasa. Yun na then, nga. Ano na nangyari dun sa yung mga Viber groups na member ka? Ah, immediately po. Your Honor, after po nung first hearing nyo, nung inexpose po nyo to, nag-dissolve ka agad sila. Siyempre po, mag, magtatago yan. Magbuburrow yan sila underground. And then, uh, ang feeling ko po ngayon is, wala, nag-sacrifice na ako. I don't think I can go back to my work as an immigration officer kasi, siyempre, <laughs> Galit na sa akin yung bureau. So this is, but this is how you feel uh, right now, this afternoon, And yung Alex. More on sa, ano po, Your Honor, yung 
safety lang po ng pamilya ko kasi I've been receiving death threats na rin po. I know, and the committee is very concerned um, about that and appreciates yung pag-appear mo together with all our other resource persons uh, pa rin ngayong hapon. But, but in speaking about your colleagues at yung mga boss mo, uh, gaya kanina, sinabi mo sa committee na wala dito sa session hall yung mga opisyal ng BI na may kaalaman kang may kinalaman dito sa Pastillas operation. In the same way, uh, nagko-concur ka ba or hindi ka ba nagko-concur dun sa isa sa mga unang remarks ko na hindi lahat ng frontline, mid-level and low-level BI employees uh, ay nakikihati sa Pastillas operation na iyan. I concur, Your Honor. Pero kung bibigyan ko po kayo ng parang uh, percentage, para po sa akin, mga 10% na lang yung hindi kasama sa sa modus. Alright. Iaalamin niya ng komite because ang mind naman ng bawat Senate committee dito, and gusto kong iput on record yan sa lahat ng resource persons, no matter how big or how small yung percentage ng mga reform-minded sa anumang ahensya ng ating gobyerno na nagkaka-problema ay did that may be a good enough starting point para ipagpatuloy uh, yung mga reforma, yung mga pagwawasto uh, given yung shocking na revelations na nalalaman namin sa ganitong mga hearing in aid of legislation and particular sa aming komite in aid of pagpoprotekta sa mga babae at mga batang na bibiktima nitong mga uh, illegal pogo operations at yung mga krimen na uh, dala-dala nila. So for now, uh, maraming salamat uh, Mr. Chong, uh, Alex, para sa iyong mga sagot sa mga panimulang tanong uh, ng, uh, ng aming komite. Uh, I'd like to turn now uh, sa Bureau of Immigration. Uh, uh, preliminary question muna kay uh, Grifton Medina before I move on to uh, the commissioner. So Mr. Medina, uh, Ayon kay Alex, nag-delete na daw ng mga Viber groups. Uh, Namonitor nyo po ba ito na nagka-deletean na ng mga Viber groups? Ma'am, I'm not aware of the, the uh, Viber groups for uh, terminals as um, uh, the witness is saying. Uh, as of now, we do have Viber groups for, uh, for supervisors, for uh, deputy uh, heads, for section heads, uh, to uh, cascade um, information, especially with regard to memos or uh, like uh, urgent uh, uh, instructions from the commissioner, or at this time we have the, uh, the COVID-19, we, we still have those uh, Viber groups that uh, I am uh, uh, aware of. But the, the Viber groups that um, uh, Ms. the witness is saying is, I I haven't seen one and uh, I uh, I cannot um, confirm kung nawala na po or nandyan pa. Uh, before moving on to the commissioner, Mr. Medina, gusto ko lang ulitin yung sinabi ko actually mula pa ng unang hearing. Na actually, it's getting a bit tiresome to hear uh, from you, no? with all due respect, yung repeated na mga not aware, I do not know. Lalo na gaya ng sinabi ko rin, Anong unang hearing natin na I've heard some good things about you and you seem to be an intelligent man. Kaya talagang nandun pa rin yung hindi ako makapaniwala na you don't know or, or officials at your level uh, are completely um, uh, unaware of this. At nasabi ko noong unang hearing, it's just maybe unfortunate para po sa inyo na eh, you're, eh, you're the one I have to ask the questions of about the BI. Well, mabuti na lang for our committee as well. Andito ngayong hapon si Commissioner. So I will uh, ask additional um, ma major questions uh, kay Commissioner Morente. Commissioner, uh, gusto ko po talagang uh, magkaroon ng better understanding at para sa understanding ng aming committee. Understanding po dun sa uh, appointing power sa BI. Ano? Who appointed who? So for starters, kayo po ba uh, nag-appoint uh, kay Grifton Medina uh, sa Ports Operation Division na, na siyang pumalit kay Red Marinas. Uh, Your Honor, good afternoon. Uh, to answer the question, hindi po ako ang nag-appoint. It is always the Justice Secretary. Even in the case of 
uh, Red Marine when I entered the SOJ na the appoint. Uh, pero kayo po ba yung nag-appoint sa mga TCEU heads? Uh, I leave it to the uh, decision of the uh, chief of the POD, Port Operations Division, but pinuforward nila sa amin yung mga pangalan. And then the uh, orders emanate from uh, the Office of the Commissioner, Your Honor. So parang kayo yung last touch dun sa i-appoint or gustong i-appoint ng POD head? Upon the recommendation of the Chief POD, Your Honor. Meron po ba kayong mga lower officials sa inyo sa bureau na ang commissioner mismo ang nag appoint um, The arrangement, at the present arrangement with the Justice Secretary is for division heads, uh, we just recommend and then uh, they will screen. But these people are being screened also by the Personnel Selection Board and Bureau. And then we come up with a short list. We forward it to the Secretary. And um, the Department of Justice will appoint them yung sa division level. For the section level, we also I also have to ask permission from the Department of Justice because of the very limited authority that I have based on uh, the very old law that we have, the 1940 Philippine Immigration Act, and it is also being supported by the Administrative Code of 1987, plus the Civil Service Circulars pertaining to uh, the powers of the, the uh, agency head, specifically the Bureau of Immigration Chief. I do not even have disciplinary powers, Your Honor. That's the uh, problem, problem that uh, I have. That's why I'm working for the passing of a new immigration law, which would correct the system, Your Honor. Yes, just to put on record, I Please have filed actually the new, uh, a new draft for an immigration law, precisely addressing those concerns. Thank you, Thank Senator you and uh, the chair will probably uh, join and uh, you and support you in that, support Senator uh, Aimee uh, as one of the probable policy recommendations of the Committee on Women, our committee, uh, to come out of um, these hearings. Because uh, wala po bang ina-appoint directly and solely ng uh, commissioner. Uh, uh, medyo, na, medyo nakakagulat po. And, and sabi nyo nga po, you have no disciplinary powers and yet you were able to at least start disciplinary proceedings or or impose disciplinary actions on five, initially five BI personnel. We, we read that uh, in the media. Uh, Wala po ba kayong direction ina-appoint? I had to inform also the secretary that I was reshuffling, removing the uh, terminal heads since there is an ongoing investigation. I created, Your Honor, a fact-finding committee chaired by uh, Deputy Commissioner Javier. Uh, their job will only be to investigate, and then they come up with a recommended um, administrative action, which I will also recommend only to the Secretary of Justice. If only I would be given the authority, I would suspend all of these people pending the conduct of the investigation. Although this, I will communicate with Secretary Givari, Your Honor. Medyo nakakalito po kasi yan, no? na at isa sa pagdinig namin, iba't ibang appointing powers, and even more nakakagulat na yung commissioner ng isang napaka-importanting bureau, which is our frontline border guards, ay wala po kayong specific na opo, pow, appointing powers na exclusive sa inyong office with the disciplinary uh, powers that flow from that. Uh, meron naman po, Your Honor. My appointing uh, power is limited to contractual employees. So, pag nagkamali ang contractual employee or JO, I can terminate them immediately. But for plantilla position employees, uh, there is the civil service rule that uh, the appointing authority is the dismissing authority. So, these powers I do not have uh, for the plantilla officers, Your Honor. 
before I, uh, we continue with the commissioner, matanong ko lang kay uh, Alex, no? May J, mga J.O. ba na nagdi-deal sa mga Chinese uh, tourists kung pogo workers? Tapagalam mo? Uh, sa personal knowledge ko po, meron po tayong mga J.O. or yung mga non-plantilla positions na nasa airport who are, uh, yes, They are. They are. Uh, they are part of the Pastillas scheme. Mga ilang porsyento yung mga JO, ilang porsyento yung mga plantilla uh, frontline personnel na bahagi nitong Pastillas operation? Sa mga JO po. Uh, Sa paanong functions niyang mga JO na nag-deal nag with uh, yung mga Chinese tourists. Okay, for example po, no? and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if they are not J.O., yung interpreter, translator, since they can, they can speak uh, Chinese, Mandarin, uh, sila mismo, sila mismo po, uh, connected sila sa mga, sa mga Chinese, uh, if not the tra Chinese travel agencies, sila mismo. Connected sila. Oh, pero isang halimbawa lang yon. So, meron pa bang ibang JO na uh, frontline na nakikipag-interact uh, sa mga Chinese tourists na yan? Uh, are they like 1% of those in the Pastillas operation or 10% or more? Sa pagkakaalam ko po, pag, kapag JO, nandun po to sa BCIU, yung Intel, Intel nga, nandyan po yung maraming JO. Opo. Yun yung, yung pong salubong, yung pong mga nagpapapila, andyan po yan, yung mga J.O. And yung mga ibang TCEU staff, J.O. din yun. BCIU, napaka-importanteng unit, Intel. So, but with your enumeration so far, one-third ba ng mga nasa Pastillas operation ay mga J.O.? Would you be able to, to estimate kung anong proportion nila na nakapaloob sa uh, operasyon na ito? Yes, Your Honor. More or less, mga one-third. Mga one-third. Mm. Alright. I'll return now to... Yes, of course. Senator Annie. Uh, pwede pong magtanong, kasi binabasa ko lang yung memo circular, ano, na inilabas ni Secretary Aguirre noon, yung Department Circular 041, yung August 15, 2017, Grabe ang kapangyarihan na binigay sa POD at sa SOCO, di ba? Talagang uh, halos lahat pwedeng lang gawin sa visa on arrival. Eh, tatanong ko, ang kop sa palagay ninyo, Commissioner Morente, at uh, ang balita ko si Mr. Medina, nag-aral pa sa US tungkol sa immigration law. Sa palagay ninyo, tama po ba itong uh, sistema ng uh, lahat ng kapangyarihan, halos, sa visa, pag binasa mo, pwede mong iban yung mga... Chinese uh, uh, travel agents, pwede kang mag-discarte, pwede kang mag-extend uh, ng six months, ibigay ng visa, mas mahaba pa. Sa palagay ninyo, tama po ba ito na halos yung uh, Bureau of Immigration, uh, lahat ng kapangyarihan ninyo napunta sa POD at sa SOCO, tama po ba yung ganun? Um, to answer indirectly, Your Honor, that's why I recommended that the visa upon arrival should only be one month, which was adopted by the Secretary Guevara, and he issued an amendment to this, na hindi na extendable, and it should be ticket-based. Kung nakalagay sa ticket na one week siya, the order of the visa upon arrival contains the dates of his arrival and his departure. Non-extendable, non-convertible to other visas, Your Honor. Pero sino ang uh, magbibigay? Asa kamay pa rin ba ng POD at ng SOCU? Or... Uh na ibabalik sa mas mataas na opisyal o may kapangyarihan ba kayo sa biuro na magsalita? Sapagkat parang sa kanila na lahat eh. Uh, Your Honor, the visa upon arrival is processed in the office of the Commissioner. Uh, we forward the uh, copies of the visa to the travel agencies who apply for it and then forward the same to the port operations for their, uh, for their copies para pag dumating po na andon. And it is already automated. Nakalagay na ako doon sa ano namin that these are the control numbers for the different visa and arrivals, Your Honor. 
Tapusin po natin na yung documentary compliance. Madali naman ibigay uh, lahat ng mga papeles na yan, true or not true. Ang totoo, wala nang alam at wala nang uh, saliksik sapagkat talagang dependent rin kayo sa mga frontliners, hindi po ba? Uh, dinadaan po sa amin kasi yung application yan. The purpose of the application being passed through the Office of the Commissioner 10 days prior minimum the information uh, derived. For derogatory check, Your Honor. But the information derived uh, has uh, made some writers such as Sinamon Tulfo, di ba, sinabi na parang nagiging uh, kwan lang kayo, lame duck daw ang commissioner. Pagkat uh, nandun sa frontliners lahat ng kapangyarihan at uh, lahat ng mga sikat na hawak ng marinas. Tama po ba? Uh, that was the general impression we had, Your Honor. And uh, actually, the word use, the words used were lame duck, si uh, Morente, at saka figurehead lang, sayang daw si Medina. Ano hong reaction ninyo sa mga salitang ganun? Uh, well, I think uh, these are realities dahil limited nga ho ang authority na ibinigay ng lumang uh, batas ng immigration, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Meron lang akong hirit, no, kay Alison Chong na parang hindi ninyo nababanggit yung Fidel Mendoza. Wala kayong personal knowledge or uh, naririnig tungkol doon kasi parang yun ang pinaka-maingay na pangalan. Eh. Yes, Your Honor, kilala ko po si Fidel Mendoza. Uh, uh -huh. Dati po siyang, nilagyan po siya ng... Uh, Gumawa na naman ng bagong position doon beside the POD chief. Sa, beside the POD chief's office siya mismo doon. POD, ano to? Uh, chief, of oper, chief of staff, parang ganon. So, again, in, in my point of view, since si Fidel Mendoza, kanang kamay siya ni Red Marinas, he was there. Beside the POD chief, para i oversee yung uh, yung mga modus within the bureau. Pero kapag hindi na babanggit yung Erwin F. Ortanes. Yes, Your Honor. Kilala po niyo yon. Kilala ko po, Your Honor. Si Erwin Ortanes po is the overall TCEU head during uh, Red Marinas' time as POD chief. So, under niya, si Glenn Comia, na minention ko earlier, then and Binso. Yun yung mga nabanggit mo. Glenn Guevara. Meron tataka ako, bakit hindi binanggit yung nais, nasa taas? Yung binanggit mo yung nasa baba eh. Yes, Your Honor. Hindi ko po nabanggit kasi yung nag-focus po ako dun sa mga alam ko pong nagsusupply mismo ng Chinese passengers po, yung related po sa Pogo. Pero yun, tao po niya yun. Tao po niya yung mga yun. Siya po yung pinaka uh, leader nila. Ulit-ulit mo binabanggit sa uh, si uh, Mark Red Marinas. Pagkatapos niyang tumakbo ng eleksyon nung Mayo, nasa na siya? Uh, Your Honor, nat natalo po siya eh sa Muntinlupa, and then wala na po siya sa Bureau of Immigration since nag-resign po siya. Hindi na siya bumalik? Hindi na po bumalik. Pero lahat ng galamay niya nandun pa rin. Wala naman na si Bak. Wala po, Your Honor. Yung ama niya, yung sinasabing father and son tandem, nasa na po ba si Maynardo Marinas? Si Maynardo Marinas, I am not sure kung connected pa siya sa Bureau. Pero ang dati po niyang uh, position, nasa Soku, head Soku doon. So ang nangyari po kasi, from, from my point of view and from opinion po to ng mga immigration officers, yung Soku and yung uh, kinreate yan para i-hijack yung powers ng commissioner's office. Tapos, yun namang, ano, yan sa POD, yung kaya nilagay dyan si Fidel Mendoza as yung chief of staff ba yan, pero wala na siya dyan ngayon, tinanggal na eh. Para naman, i-hijack naman niya yung powers ng POD chief. Yun po, ma'am, that's just my...
Maraming salamat. How you see it. Thank you. Your Honor. Honor. Yun yung mga pangalan ko naririnig. Eh. Yung Dimples Malyari, nandyan pa ba? Nandyan pa po, Your Honor, si Dimples Malyari. Pero hindi ko po siya nakikita sa airport. Pero kilala mo? Kilala ko po. Makikilala mo kapag may retrato? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, pwedeng itanong kay Commissioner at kay Mr. Medina, ano na ang balita kay Fidel Mendoza? Uh, Your Honor, si Fidel Mendoza po, uh, inilipat na because his uh, item is uh, security guard 2. Kaya tinanggal ko, ng, uh, tinanggal ko sa airport and uh, he is placed in assignment sa main office, Your Honor. Uh, just doon sa question niyo rin kanina, Mr. Maynard Marinas has already retired uh, last year, Your Honor. Yes. Uh, yung Erwin Ortanez, may nakakaalam ba kung nasaan? Uh, Erwin Ortanez, Your Honor, is with the Port Operations Division under Gipton Medina. Mr. Medina is uh, shaking his head po. The age, I think, right now with the BCIU. But the BCIU is uh, not under Port Operations. And I ano ho yung VCIU pa sa inyo? Um, Hindi ko alam. Border mo. Control Intelligence Unit. Just want to clear po, ang VC, uh, Border Control Enforcement uh, Intelligence Unit is not under POD or Port Operations in the airport. It's under the Office of the Commissioner and also TCU. Teka, nalito uh, ako dun eh. I stand corrected nalito your honor. Nalito ako dito. Teka, uh, dati-rati si Erwin Ortanez nasa ampo. Your Honor, siya ang overall TCEU head dati. Yeah, that's what I understood. Ang sabi, TCEU head dati. Former, no? Tapos, ano nangyari sa kanya? Asa na siya? Um, I transferred after the investigation on the uh, expose of uh, Mr. Montulfo, Your Honor. I transferred the functions of the uh, the traffic, uh, the Terminal Control Enforcement Unit and the BCIU, the Intelligence Unit, back to the control of uh, the Office of the Commissioner so that there will be check and balance with the intent of uh, uh, removing some of the functions uh, which were before under the control of the Terminal, of the uh, Chief of Port Operations, Your Honor. So he's directly under your supervision? Uh, at present, Your Honor, he is under the um, the Office of the Commissioner, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Senator uh, Ami, we will invite that, to that person us? to the next hearing. Would he be willing to help us uh, uh, with this investigation, Pa? Uh, I will uh, require him, Your Honor, if uh, he is uh, required, if he is uh, someone. And... Uh, Mr. Fidel Mendoza, uh, he is also under the immigration office, under the uh, commissioner, Pa? It's a main office, Your Honor. I will uh, wait for the someone and uh, inform them, Your Honor. Thank you very much. I cede it to the chairman and, her, and to her better wisdom um, for the succeeding hearings. Thank you, Senator Aimee. So to continue po, but before I continue with the Commissioner, nagulat lang ako dun sa isang uh, sagot niyo kay uh, Senator Aimee about para magkaroon ng check and balance. And I don't think that uh, your office deserves to only check and balance others. Dapat kayo, yung office niyo po talaga ang, hindi pa nga primus inter pares, eh, not first among equals, pero clearly, and probably primarily through yung pag-amienda namin sa 1940 uh, law, clearly established operationally as uh, at the very top uh, of the Bureau. So to continue, uh, Commissioner, uh, alam ko po, uh, cavalier din kayo, upper classman ka nung late husband ko, um, and I know that uh, you do or you should take seriously 
uh, itong tanong ko na, what measures have you undertaken since Monday, after Monday's hearing, to investigate the allegations uh, that our committee heard uh, in its hearing? Uh, yes, Your Honor. On February 17, I issued a letter directive creating the fact-finding committee to conduct the investigation on the Pastilla scheme, and I designated uh, Deputy Commissioner Toby Javier as the chairman. Uh, they will con be conducting the investigation. They will compose the board of, uh, refer it to the board of discipline for appropriate uh, legal um, assessment and come up with a recommendation. I also issued a show cause order to acting chief court operations division, Mr. Grifton Medina, regarding the, uh, this uh, incident. I also issued uh, personal orders for the relief of Immigration Officer 2, Chevy Chase Nanyong, assigning him to the admin uh, division he was, uh, because he was identified in the uh, video, Your Honor. I issued a termination order for contractual Yanni M. Howe. He was also a part of the video with uh, out prejudice to the filing of a criminal case against uh, subject uh, personnel. I issued a directive to the Court of Operations Division Chief, the terminal heads, the TCEU, and BCIU to identify BI personnel involved in the scheme. On February 19, I sent a memorandum to SOJ um, requesting for the uh, confirmation of the relief of the Acting Port Operations Division Chief um, as the investigation is uh, presently ongoing. He should be assigned with uh, uh, the admin division as well. May I clarify that you have asked for the relief of Mr. Grifton Medina? Yes, Your Honor. I see. From the, uh, I asked the permission of the Secretary of Justice, Your Honor. Commissioner, um, uh, the this, chair uh, and uh, in, including and Senator Ami, we would like to request that you give uh, our committee copies of these letter directives, uh, show cause order, personnel uh, orders, termination orders, um, other directives, and memoranda. All these uh, six issuances that you mentioned, please will, send Honor. copies to yes, the committee. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, Your Honor, uh, these schemes are not very new to my knowledge because this has been reported to me for quite some time since I entered the immigration. And I have took several measures already to address this aside from the investigation done by a, another board of discipline uh, which was composed to investigate the uh, news report by Montulfo on the involvement of Port Operations Division's uh, officers in uh, the facilitation and escort service. Uh, actually, last year, July 16, I personally asked uh, Director Dante Giran of the NBI to investigate the reports on trafficking and uh, facilitation of Indian nationals in Clark and Calibo. Uh, I did this because uh, I wanted, I always wanted a, an independent uh, out of the agency investigation to do these things, uh, knowing that um, if I, it, it would be in the uh, bureau, there would be some bias because of the relationships between uh, the persons involved. I'm also glad, Commissioner, na binanggit nyo yung mga uh, Indians, uh, persons sa Clark and Calibo, kasi ito, pinag-uusapan namin ni Senator Ami, itong issue na ito, nanganganak ng nanganganak ng iba't ibang issue, at nakakarinig kami ng iba't ibang klaseng mga visa ng uh, ating Republika na inaabuso ng ganito at ganyan mga parties uh, sa loob ng BI. And there was a time na may preferred visas na ginagamit para sa mga Indian nationals, but later, yung visa yun naman ay naging favored document na abusuhin para sa ibang grupo ng nationals, in this case, mga Chinese. So, nanganganak ng nanganganak yung problema ito, Commissioner. At agaya ng sinabi nyo, hindi po ito yung unang beses ng ganitong mga aligasyon 
uh, laban sa BI tungkol sa pagtanggap ng kickback. Bakit parang paulit-ulit pa yung yung problema no? Nareresolve uh, pa talaga natin o hindi? Your Honor, I think uh, naging kalakaran na ho kasi yan sa immigration. I think uh, over the years, uh, this has evolved into a syndicated uh, cooperation na uh, with my limited powers and uh, uh, mahirap po kasi i-address na buo. I, I cannot be in all places at the same time, but uh, we do have some reform measures uh, made. Gaya nung Before you proceed, Commissioner, on the reform measures, may I, however, uh, may the committee, however, afford, uh, affirm the Commissioner of BI that, in fact, as our border guards, you have to be everywhere at every time. So, titignan po namin ng aming komite ano yung policy recommendations na pwede namin gawin kaugnay nung uh, yung batas uh, ng Bureau of Immigration to enable it to effectively police our borders. In fact, to, uh, in effect, be everywhere at every time under the leadership of the Office of the Commissioner. Yes, ma'am. Uh, what I meant was literally, I cannot be in all places at the same time, but uh, one of our moves is uh, automation para maw mawala na ho yung uh, human contact. Uh, recently, we have uh, operationalized the electronic gates, but at present, I instructed for the closing of it because we wanted to uh, effectively scrutinize the passports cover to cover because of the outbreak of the NCOV-19. Uh, among the other measures that uh, we are doing is the ease of doing business. I had to, to review when I entered uh, the steps for all of these uh, transactions. Uh, we are moving towards uh, uh, electronic payments. Hopefully, uh, we could operationalize it. Yung you know, Port Operations Division is already... Uh, you know, ang inuna ko for the ISO certification, actually. Uh, they are certified 9001-2015 since 2018. But I know this, these measures uh, cannot prevent kung meron talagang iskalawags in our ranks. And uh, there should be, on my uh, own opinion, there should be immediate... Uh, sanctions that could be done, at least mabigyan man lang sana commissioner and the deputy commissioners. Uh, administrative or disciplinary functions. Kasi madali ho sanang ano yan eh. Uh, in these situations uh, where I come from sa PNP ako noon, madali ho ano eh, there should be summary hearings para ma-dismiss natin, ma-suspend natin, ma-matanggal natin Yung mga tiwali, kasi kung ipapasa lang namin sa Department of Justice, mag uh, ano lang ho yun eh, it will just uh, stay there for a while. So hindi na aksyonan sa dami ho nung uh, inaatinan din, I know, of the Department of Justice. Ma-archive lang ho yung mga cases na pinapadala namin sa kanila. Pwede pang lakarin ng mga tao na i-stay put na muna dyan hanggang magpalit ng bagong administration, tsaka na lang ilabas yan. Speaking of the DOJ, uh, Commissioner, I'd actually like to move on to some questions ngayon kay Yusek Villar, but may I please request the Commissioner i-submit po yung comprehensive list ng mga uh, measures na in-undertake nyo since Monday's hearing, pati po kung meron kayong comprehensive list ng mga reforms na sinimulan or pinagpapatuloy nyo uh, sa loob ng BI. Actually, when you mentioned po yung uh, ease of doing business, in the case of this pastillas operation, masyado ang naging easy yung doing business na um umabot sa pang na. And that's really what the committee would like to see you and the mother department, the Bureau and the mother department, crack down on, especially, most especially, para protektahan yung ating mga kababaihan at, uh, at mga bata. So please do uh, submit that uh, to the committee, Commissioner. Okay, yes, uh, Senator Ayn. Yes, Your Honor. Sorry. If uh, we're going to proceed to another topic, I'd just like to ask uh, Mr. Alison Chong two very quick questions. Unang-una, ang balita kasi, 
lumobo yung uh, numero ng mga fugitives from justice na China nationals. Doon sa ibang giring, lumabas na isang daan yung pangkaraniwan na numero kada taon. E noong nakaraang taon, bakit lumobo sa 733? So itatanong ko, may alam ka bang VVIP? Mas VIP pa sa yung mga normal na VIP na China nationals. Kapag may blacklisting, may record na criminal, meron pang mas malaki. Yes, Your Honor. Special arrangement yan. Yang kasama yan, yung mga blacklisted, they can freely enter our country. So, Paano yun? Iho holding room na ulit, tapos magpapastilyas? Malaki-laki yung irolyo yung 5 million na sinasabing kalakaran. Hindi, Your Honor. Ganito po. Uh, halimbawa, let's say, Den Binsol, through his TCEU na galamay member, lalapit yan sa likod ng immigration officer sa counter. May dala na yun, may pangalan doon, may picture. Oh, ito, kay Sir Den Den to. So, pagka ganun, passing through na lang yun. Ah, ganun. Passing through, as in, hindi scan ng passport, na lang dadaan yun. lang. Dadaan lang yun. Package pa yun, pati sa departure, ganun din. So, iba-iba eh, iba yung rate? Iba po ang rate niyan. Eh, malaki na po yan, hindi ko po sure. Pero, from what I have heard, it ranges from around 50 to 200,000 per... May mga million-million pa ako naririnig eh. Pag mga high profile po, Your Honor, million-million po yun. O kasi padami ng padami eh, 733. Ito talaga, convicted criminals ng China. Narito, nagkakalat sa Pilipinas. Yes, Your Honor, labas-pasok po. Itatanong ko lang, kasabi mo kanina, pag big time, wala hindi ka sure. Nakatanggap ka ba? Sa big time, yes, Your Honor, hindi po. So, doon ka sa pangkaraniwan na pasok-pasok na visa upon arrival? Uh, hindi po sa visa upon arrival, Your Honor. Ano po, wala pong, wala pong bayad yung visa upon arrival. Talagang tinatatakan po yun at face value. Doon lang entry, entry. Hindi pa yung recommendation. Yes, Your Honor. Yung visa upon arrival po, uh, wala pong nag-question doon na immigration officer tinatatakan Pero, po. ang sinasabi mo, kasama ka sa pastillas. Yes, Your Honor. Kasi nasa Viber group ka rin, di ba? Sangkot ka rin doon. Otherwise, hindi ka isasama. It's all right, uh, Mr. Chong Alex, for the record, um, as approved by Senate President Tito Soto, you have immunity for the statements you will be making to this committee in aid of legislation, for the record. Yes, Your Honor. That is why I have knowledge. I have uh, detailed knowledge of everything. Okay, maraming salamat sa ating chairwoman. At uh, eto nga, meron tayong maliwanag na whistleblower. Alam na alam ang kalakaran, mismo nakatanggap at uh, kabilang sa ating mga Viber group. So, meron talaga tayong matibay na ebidensya. Salamat po. Salamat, Sen. Aimee. Uh, moving now to uh, the Department of Justice, uh, Yusek Villar, uh, Aglipa Villar, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Just uh, two, but uh, for this committee, important questions to continue getting to the bottom of this para maprotektahan yung ating mga kababaihan at bata. Uh, does the DOJ have oversight powers over the appointments made by the BI head office? Uh, the, the explanation given by um, Commissioner Morente is um, correct. So, um, the only those that are that are appointed by him are the ones that are contractual or job orders so all the other appointments pass through the are issued by the secretary of justice so actually it's oversight plus plus powers dahil may direct appointing power ang department sa loob ng bureau yes and and also uh it's uh that the bureau of immigration is um under the department of justice as an attached agency, so there is close coordination between the Secretary of Justice and the Commission. So kung tutuusin, pwede rin tanggalin ang department ang mga opisyal o personnel ng Bureau because of the disciplinary powers flowing from the appointing powers, at least sa 1940 law na hindi pa namin inaaral kung papaano i-amend. And of course, for which I, I hope that the relevant committee here in the Senate will have the support of the department. That is correct. Thank you, Yusek. And uh, what steps is the department intending to undertake 
uh, considering gaya din ng kinonfirm ni Commissioner, paulit-ulit na natin nadidinig itong mga, well, sorry to say, kababalagahan sa BI. No? Ano, ano po yung plano ng department moving forward? Well, actually, as early as uh, when the, the secretary was appointed, he, he already issued several department orders to calling for the investigation of um, the, the illegal activities, such as the escort services and the assistance of commission, the commission of, um, or the facilitation of human trafficking by uh, employees and um, officials of the Bureau of Immigration. Uh, so these are these were issued as early as um, April of um, 2019, and uh, and further to that, uh, July of 2019, and um, October 2019, and the latest is January 2020. So there were several department orders already uh, calling, uh, directing the NBI to conduct investigations and case buildup on the alleged involvement of Bureau of Immigration officials and personnel in human trafficking activities and escort services. And even uh, case buildup regarding the alleged entry of prostitutes into the country to work at prostitution dens, mainly catering to Chinese workers. So all these were already, all these department orders were already issued by the secretary in response to uh, the reports or um, tips from uh, sources, unknown sources, regarding these activities. And, and um, the Bureau has already started, the National Bureau of Investigation has already started their investigations and had some initial reports. And, uh, and there, it is ongoing, as was stated by, by um, Mr. Chong, that, uh, that the NBI closely monitoring the activities of the Bureau of Immigration officers, and that's why they had to dismantle their, their fiber groups periodically. Um, but aside from that, it's correct that, uh, as mentioned by the commissioner, that they do their own fact-finding, uh, their own fact-finding um, investigations, and they submit a report to the department, and the, the, the department um, evaluates this for a prima facie case. If there is um, if there is a, there is indeed um, basis to to uh, ask the respondent to submit an explanation, uh, and um, the SOJ can issue formal charges if there is a case, if there is a prima facie case based on the evidence and the fact finding report that the BI has submitted. If not, then the case will be dismissed by the secretary. But if there is, then the DOJ can conduct its own formal investigation, which um, uh, is headed by uh, the secretary. And um, there is an undersecretary in charge of the Bureau of Immigration under the department. And uh, the undersecretary is the one who, uh, and, and, uh, and other lawyers under the department, um, the technical staff, uh, composed by lawyers who handle the formal investigation and who conduct the hearings and so and and um, and ask for submission of position papers and all of these are evaluated by um, the undersecretary in charge of the Bureau of Immigration and um, and together and the SOJ is the one who who issues the decision on um, the administrative case. Sorry, you said. Did I hear you correctly um, that you mentioned something about dismantling Viber groups periodically? Are these similar to no, sorry, no, I just, the Viber groups you showed earlier? They're I, different. I was just quoting the uh, Mr. Chong when he said that. So I have no personal knowledge. I, I was surprised. I thought that the DOJ had personal knowledge, and that's why it was moving to dismantle no, such I, groups. I, when earlier I the BI said, said that they were not aware. That, uh, it's it, it's probably why they were dismantling their Viber groups periodically because the NBI was closely monitoring them, as he mentioned earlier. Thank you, Yusek. And now, um, moving to precisely to, to the NBI. Um, Attorney Tovera, kayo po ba ulit yung sasagot para sa NBI? Or sino po ba yung pinaka-senior dito ngayon na magsasalita? 
Your Honor, uh, I am the most uh, senior, but uh, anybody can uh, answer you depending on the question, Your Honor. Yes, thank you, Attorney Tovera. So, para po sa NBI, no, uh, parang best supporting actor kayo dito eh, at different stages dahil kayo nag-iimbestiga, kaya kinailangan ng mga nagpapastilyas na, o oh, yung nagbabiber noon na magpastilyas na lang, etc. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you have also figured, even earlier in the hearings of this committee, na kasama ng PNP, nagre-raid para mag-rescue ng mga trafficked and prostituted women and children at para mag-aresto ng mga suspected buyers. Pag naman kayo po ay nagre-raid ng mga illegal pogo operations o kaya yung nabagit ng mga prostitution dens na catering sa mga Chinese, tinitingnan niyo po ba yung passport uh, ng mga Chinese nationals na sangkot o na-aresto at therefore suspects? Kung tinitingnan niyo po yun, ano karaniwan ang visa status nitong mga na-aresto? Your Honor, uh, I would like to inform this uh, committee that uh, not all those uh, rescued victims are handed with their visa because uh, some are under the control of the management. But uh, some of them have uh, their visa uh, in their own uh, personal belongings. And most of them, uh, in my personal uh, experience, the, the, uh, their visa is uh, a tourist visa. Pero bukod po dun sa mga nare-rescue nyong victims, survivors, yung pong na-aresto nyo, ina-aresto nyo mga suspected buyers ng mga sexual so-called services dito sa prostitution dens, ano po yung visa status ng mga uh, suspected buyers na yon, ng mga Chinese uh, nationals? Uh, same, uh, Your Honor, uh, they are handed with a tourist uh, visa and uh, we filed cases against them because... Uh, they are using uh, the trafficked uh, persons. All right, understood, Attorney Tovera. Yung isa rin pong uh, matingkad na usapin uh, ay yung pag-recycle ng mga prostituted Chinese women. Nare-rescue na sila, and then sa unang hearing, sinabi ng BI either na deport sila or sabi ng Voice of the Free NGO, no, na-release sa mga relatives na biglang nag-appear at kiniklaim sila. Pero sinabi din nung PNP, if I remember correctly, yung PNP Makati nung unang hearing, meron silang karanasan, at least minsan, may na-rescue uli na previously rescued prostituted and trafficked Chinese woman na parang na-recycle lamang. So, yung, itong pag-recycle ng mga Chinese prostituted women at Chinese workers na nahuhuli sa mga illegal na pogos, kasi nga, di naman sila uh, nahuhuli ng BI pag-expired na ang visa nila. At meron po po kaming isang nabalitaan. So, gaya ng nabagit ko kanina, itong isyong ito nagsimula sa pogo-related trafficking and prostitution. Nanganganak ng nanganganak, parang isang unending nightmare ng iba pang mga issue. Meron uh, po bang nabalitaan kayo na uh, uh, nabalitaan ko po na uh, may scam na ire-report yung lost passport, uh, ang passport na expired na ang visa, uh, tapos, kukuha ng panibagong passport sa Chinese Embassy, then papatatakan sa BI na may panibagong visa. So, gano'n po katalama yung ganitong operation ng recycled workers or recycled trafficked women, uh, yung bumabalik na lang sa dating gawa matapos ma-raid. Ma Nare-raid nyo at ng PNP, nare-rescue, pero sa ganitong ibang scheme, sa kunyari, mawawala yung expired visa na passport and then mapapatatakan na lang ulit sa BI. May bago na namang passport at visa. Tuloy ang hindi ligaya pero tuloy yung mapait na trabaho yan. Your Honor, doon po sa first part ng yung inquiry, uh, as regards the recycling of uh, uh, rescued victims, it happened once in my operation. Um, few months ago, uh, this uh, particular establishment in Makati was raided by one division of the NBI. Subsequently, the uh, rescued victim was uh, released to the relatives. And a month thereafter, my team also conducted another operation in a different uh, building. And uh, the, that uh, operating unit during that first time of operation came to our office and uh, he said, uh, 
looks familiar pointing to that lady as regards the second question your honor i have this uh, uh, experience when uh, the uh, workers from uh, POG operators escaped because uh, they're not being treated humanely. There are about 10 youngsters, Chinese youngsters, and uh, they, they, uh, their uh, passports were being, uh, no, hostaged by the uh, employer. Just to help them, I uh, subpoenaed the uh, uh, POG operator somewhere in Clark, Pampanga, and the uh, good thing, they uh, reported to me their passports. As soon as they uh, surrendered the passports, these Chinese youngsters went back to China immediately. Furthermore, I uh, coordinated with our computer crimes division for the uh, investigation of that POGO uh, operator, whether or not they are licensed or not. Your Honor. Thank you, uh, Attorney Tovera. Yung pong hindi nyo na confirm kung narinig nyo na rin yung uh, iwawala kunyari yung passport nitong illegal Chinese pogo workers pag paso na yung visa and then kukuha na lang ulit ng bagong passport sa Chinese Embassy and then papatatakan ulit sa BI. So bagong passport, bagong visa. Uh, personally, wala pa po akong uh, experience dyan, ma'am. Thank you, uh, Attorney Tovera. Um, yan po yung isa sa mga issue na patuloy na titignan din uh, ng komite ito, and I, I have a suspicion, a sense that it might be related dun sa mga um, syndicate groups within the Bureau na nakikipagkutsaba sa mga uh, travel agencies and tour operators. Sorry. Thank you very much from the NBI. May 300 million kayo sa akin. <laughs> Lakas-lakas ng NBI. Uh, okay. Um, balik lang kay Alison Chong para maliwanag lang yung story. Hindi ko naabutan. Sabi mo nasa bureau ka pa rin? Yes, Your Honor. Bale, parang naka-leave or emergency leave lang. Ano yun, naka-freezer ka? O kung saan mo yun? O sinabihan ka na wag mo na mag-report? Hindi po muna ako nag-report kasi baka po may mangyaring masama po sa akin. Ano yung sabihin nun? Tinanggal ka ba? May kaso ka ba sa immigration? Wala po, Your Honor. Uh, basta kung saan ka na lang pumunta rito? Nung, uh, starting po nung Monday after po nung first hit, First hearing, First hindi hearing na po ako pumasok sa... Lisa. Yes, Your Honor. Hindi na po Abu ako pumasok na. kasi dangerous po. Pero before that, wala kayong alitan sa mga iba't ibang grupo? Wala naman po, Your Honor. Eh, ba't mo naisip na isilawat lahat ito? Uh, gaya nga po nung sinabi ko kanina, Your Honor, two, there, there are two main reasons. First, I feel na my fellow immigration officers have been enslaved by this corrupt system. Kung binabayaran po natin ng tama ang ating mga border guards or immigration officers, hindi po sana, mag magiging deterrent po yon sa corruption. Kasi ang pinapoint out ko po dito, hindi lang yung, yung uh, bigat ng trabaho, but yung responsibility and accountability ng isang tao. And then second po, uh, I I felt that the Filipino people should know about this because it feels like an invasion. Okay, but you personally are not under threat of uh, removal from employment or uh, may kaso ka or may nagsabi sa'yo tatanggaling ka na kasi may, may mga bulong-bulong na kasi may atraso yan sa amin kaya kumanta na? Uh, wala po, Your Honor. Wala pong ganun. In fact, galit sila sa akin because I've been exposing them. Apo. Yun po. Yun po yung galit nila sa akin because I've, I have been exposing them. Okay. So, 
you uh, deny all those who are imputing all kinds of evil motives sa iyo. Wala kang motive na ganun. Wala po, Your Honor. In fact, expected ko naman po na they will do that. Hindi ka galit sa sino man doon at naghihigante. Wala po, Your Honor. I couldn't... Paano ko po paghihigantihan yung... Hindi, kasi ang balita naman dyan, di ba? Compet competing factions din yan, eh, di ba? Parang kanya-kanyang uh, uh, Chinese uh, travel agents, kanya-kanyang pagsusumigasig para maging supplier na malaki. Uh, may nasagasaan ka ba o baliktad? Kaya nandito ka ngayon. Well, Your Honor, for the record, hindi... Hindi naman po talaga ako humawak ng any Chinese, uh, what do you call this? Hindi po ako naging supplier. So, dun pa lang, uh, I cannot become a competition. Una po, hindi po ako naagawan, and hindi rin po ako nangaagaw. Okay, thank you. Yan so, po, that's on record. Maraming salamat. Salamat din, Sen Aini. Um, so, in closing, and before uh, I suspend this hearing, uh, we are actually in receipt of news, baka nakita nyo na rin ang ilan po sa inyo online. We're in receipt of news that the President just fired officials and employees of the Bureau of Immigration uh, involved in the Pastilla scheme. Uh, I welcome a continuing cleanup of the Bureau of Immigration. Sobrang garapala na ang Pastilla's operation. But I want to emphasize this is bigger than the frontline employees. We need to protect the innocent, ensure that our borders are protected, go after the big fish, and create systemic change sa loob ng Bureau of Immigration. At dapat talaga Pilipino ang may control ng ating border at mga ports, hindi mga Chinese. We need to clean up the BI at dapat simula ito sa mga malalaking taong sangkot dito at siguraduhin hindi nire-recycle lamang ang mga korap at gahamang opisyal. In our next hearing, the committee will subpoena those who profited millions. Una na dito, ang dating BI Deputy Commissioner na si Red Marinias. Ngayon, nagsisimula muli ang pagtatapos ng korapsyon sa BI na nagpapasok ng mga illegal na Chinese na binibiktima ang sarili nating mga kababaihan at mga bata. Uh, with thanks to my colleague, Senator Aimee, and repeated thanks uh, to our resource persons, and a special thanks to uh, our whistleblower, Mr. Allison Alex Chong. Thanks all around. Uh, this hearing is suspended.